If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. Now after reading the question, one of the key words that we notice is the word circle. And that suggests, of course, that this proton is traveling in a circular path around the Earth. We know that objects that travel in circular paths must have a centripetal force acting on them. Now, from a previous unit, we learned that a centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object times its speed squared divided by the radius. And the radius in this particular case is what made this question somewhat challenging. We were told in the question that this proton is moving a thousand kilometers above the surface of the Earth, essentially. So we've denoted this distance right here as being a thousand kilometers. But we don't want that distance. We need the full distance from the proton all the way to the center of the circular path. And so we're going to have to include the radius of the Earth in that distance. In other words, the total distance from the proton to the center of the circular path is going to be 1,000 kilometers plus whatever the radius of the Earth is. Now, in our textbook, if we look up the radius of the Earth, we're going to see that it's approximately 6.38 times 10 to the sixth meters. 1,000 kilometers is the same thing as 1,000 times 10 to the third meters. So if we add those two together, we should get 7.38 times 10 to the sixth meters. That's the total radius that we're going to be plugging into the formula. Now, the centripetal force is going to be supplied by the magnetic force. We've learned in this chapter that a magnetic force is equal to the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field multiplied by the sine of an angle. So we can substitute this expression for the magnetic force into Fc. Now, our objective in the question is to find the velocity, so we have to solve this equation for V. We'll notice if we divide both sides of the equation by V, the V on the left will cancel out, and on the right, we will be left with just one V in the numerator. We could then multiply both sides of the equation by R, so it cancels on the right. We will then divide both sides of the equation by M in order to isolate the velocity V. Now we are ready to plug in the known values. We've already determined the value for R. Q would be the charge on a proton, which is that standard value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. The strength of the magnetic field was given to us in the standard unit of Tesla already. As for the angle, we're going to see that it's 90 degrees. We've shown the velocity of the proton to the west. The question states that the magnetic field points in the northerly direction. We can see, therefore, that the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity is indeed 90 degrees. And then m is the mass of the proton, which you can look up in your textbook. That should be 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And when we compute this on our calculators, we get a value approximately equal to 2.83 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second as the final magnitude of the velocity. Now, since this is velocity, we must also include a direction. Well, we've sort of assumed that the velocity was pointing to the west, and that indeed turns out to be the correct answer, but we have to figure out how we actually know that it's pointing to the west. Well, as the proton moves in this circular path around the Earth, we know that the centripetal force has to point downward towards the center of the Earth. So we can label a vector with Fc. Now, we know from the right-hand rule that if we lay our hand flat out, our thumb would point in the direction of the velocity, our fingers would point in the direction of the magnetic field, and then our palm, which in this picture would be sort of right here, would be pointing in the direction of the magnetic force. Well, we want the magnetic force to be downward, the magnetic field was stated to be in the northward direction, so our thumb would necessarily be projecting to the leftward or west direction. And that is indeed how we know that the direction is west. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.